All right, it's the next day. It's um, gonna be 40 degrees today. So I wanna get this welded um, earlier than later because um, it's absolutely cooking here at the moment already. So anyway, I've taken this off. I've just un unbolted it quickly. Um, now I can get access to underneath. Um, you can see my fantastic welds here from the other day. Well, that's rough. But anyway, um, now I can actually get in there and do some welds all around here, make that strong. Same with here. These are these weird angles we've cut everywhere to make that fit. So. This here's a bit um, a bit ordinary. Just trying to work out how to do that while juggling things underneath. So what I'll do is I'll just fill all these in anyway. Like I'll put a little plate in there, fill that up, get a bit of strength back into that all around the place. So same with under here. Be able to get in here and weld this properly now. So I'll put a couple of tabs on there, temporary last night as well. Um, so weld these properly also. That's if I want to screw it to the shed if it um, moves around a bit. May not need that yet, but that's where we're up to. So we'll get this welded um, now so we can get out of the heat and we can play around with the rest of this stuff later on today. So what we're actually doing is just welding in little fillers here and there, make it a little bit stronger. Um, over here where the um, drain for the sink's gonna go, it was actually gonna rub. So I just cut a little piece of scrap metal out there. I'm gonna weld that in there soon. Um, looks a little bit rough, uh, we haven't cleaned it all up yet, but it's been an absolute mongrel to weld. Inside this um, heavy stuff is actually quite corroded, so it's um, spitting and carrying on a bit, it's quite thin, but uh, it's getting there and it's only a cleaning station which no one's going to really see, so all good. Just welding a quick end plate on the end here, just to stop things living in it. This is um, up against the shed so I can't um, really seal that. The other end will have um, that sheet stainless over it so that'll seal it up so we'll just push this in and um, tack that up properly all right so that's the frame all finished gave it a quick coat of um, anti-rust silver zinc alum spray so not the prettiest but that's pretty solid and I'll be able to bolt that um, bolt that on soon right just quickly welded this on um, just a bit of um, square RHS and a couple of hooks just sharpened up the tips of them a tiny bit. So this is upside down obviously. So when it's up the right way, that's where I stick my um, like a garden hose nozzle in there. Um, and this is where I'll hang plastic bags upside down. So once you've filleted fish, you, I put them straight into the plastic bag, keeps it all nice and clean. Still got a bit of this white paint left over. So I'm just gonna slap that on this um, board. I just got the hand planer and level this up a little bit. This is the underneath. So I thought I'd seal this because um, that will be exposed underneath, but it shouldn't get any rain on it anyway. But I'll quickly slap a coat of paint on that. Right, so I picked up a sheet of stainless steel from our local metal supplier. Um, it's um, 0.9mm thick. Um, it's actually got a brushed finish on it, which is all they pretty much had in stock. So I thought I'll go with that. And what I've done is I've marked it out. Um, I'm going to put a slight lip uh, where it goes down the side of the table. Um, that's the thickness of the table. This is like looking at the front. So this will bend down 90 degrees and then we've got 600 mil wide uh, bench Sides will bend over 90 degrees. This is going to be our backsplash So this will come up and then a little lip at the top. So I've marked it all out Cut it with a angle grinder with the one mil um, angle grinder discs So it's all ready to folding. I'll have to take it into town. That's why I had to mark it out here I've got to take it into a place where they've got a massive um, pan break or or sheet metal folder, whatever you want to call it. Um, mine's only, it will only take a sheet 1200 wide, so it's a bit too big for what I can do. So um, anyway, I'll get the big long ones bent and I'll bend the end ones back here. Right, so I've got the table back from the sheet metal folding place. So they've folded that up for us. I filled it some fish this morning. Um, went fishing last night, um, did okay. And I noticed all the water is running down this way and it drips off this end so that's perfect so now i just got to cut out where the sinks go the sink goes and that should be good right first thing i've got to do to make this fit properly is i've got to push this whole piece up against the shed that's why i made this lip on the top so let's get the fish scales out of the road what i've got to do is notch out um, around the shed so i need to put a mark where everywhere where it's got to go there and there so this has pretty much got to cut out there like that We've got to go mark all of those, cut them out, and then we'll slide it back that way. 
All right, so I've marked these out. All I'm gonna do is cut these two sides with the angle grinder, and I'm gonna fold this down, which will give me a nice little safety lip there, so it's not very sharp, and that should give me plenty of room to push that up against the shed. Okay, the moment of truth, will it fit? Oh, nice. That'll be right. Oh, that's fit, fitted good. That's nice. A little lip there. I'll pin all that to the shed later. Now for the scary part is cutting out the hole to match the sink. So I've got underneath here with the texture and just gone and traced out pretty much a very rough shape of where the sink goes. So then I'll hopefully use that as a bit of a template. What I ended up doing was um, just marking out where I want the stainless to finish on the sink and just simply marked it out in the texture, which I'll clean off later. And then I've measured from this front edge back, uh, this edge back to get all these pinpoint measurements there, which I can then transpose onto the stainless steel. So at the end of the day, that ended up being like these marks here, which we've done measuring off these edges. It should be fairly close to accurate. So now all I've got to do with the grinder is cut out all these lines and I'll have to trim up the edges a bit and make them try and round them as much as I can later. Well, I was trying to get a nice little radius um, around here when we cut with the angle grinder I'll cut this line I need a bit of a curve if I cut straight into the corner sharp with a grinder I'll get a really sharp corner I'm trying to curve it anyway hole saw and stainless steel didn't go very well I think I went a bit too fast got it too hot too quick so what I'm doing now I'm just going to use this step drill nice and slow that'll give me a slight radius there and then I can cut with a grinder should make a nice nice little neat corner Now that I've cut all the relief holes, time to get the angle grinder and cut out the shape. Just need to tidy up all the inside edges now with the flap disc on the grinder. Right, so this is the underside. I've just cleaned it up a bit with the flap disc as well so there's no burrs and sharp edges. You can see the texture lines we marked out from underneath. I didn't actually use them really as a guide. It was just um, 
something as a bit of an extra thing I thought I could do. Looks pretty close though, Look, looks like um, when you follow the lines from underneath, it's probably hard to see on the camera, they're pretty parallel, so I'm gonna hope that's gonna fit. Just throw this on, see what happens, either be a good day or bad day. It is a fish station, so it's not critical really. <laughs> Oh yes, it's not too bad. Looks like it's 100% accurate, but it's gonna be good enough. Well, it's actually not bad. Oh yeah, nice, that's all right, that'll go down. Gotta screw the sink down properly, yeah. So the plan is, so that you can see now, um, stainless will go, there'll be a lip just everywhere, it's gonna run straight into the sink. So we don't have to worry about it. So when I'm filleting, I can just go, throw the rubbish straight off into the sink. There's no lips where it can get caught. Nice, so all I've got to do now is screw this sink in properly and put a bit of Sikaflex or uh, roof and gutter silicon underneath this section here. Probably get that down, I might clamp that down. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that. Yeah, I don't really wanna screw it because I don't want anything to get caught on. Um, maybe I'll pull that down, screw that to the shed, that'll hold that bit and then maybe clamp this end and go from there. Oh, that's gonna work out well. I was a bit worried about that. Get rid of these texture lines, that'll make it look even better. Well, then no one will know how off I was. Bit of prep sole, get rid of the old texture marks. I've bolted this um, sink down now. Didn't clamp down real well because the thickness of the timber we used, but it's good enough to hold, and then we'll glue this um, stainless on top of this. So what I'll quickly do now is I'll tape up um, around this edge so when we silicon it, um, it won't make a big mess. Uh, trick to this is just whack this on wherever you like. It can be as rough as you like with this, because what we'll do is we'll trim it all up later. simply just cut out where the, just change this blade, simply just cut out where the tanks, the um, stainless is going to end up, make sure it's in the right spot. So we're leaving this tape on for later, so when we make a mess um, with silicon underneath this edge, you won't actually see it. Now we can take this off. So this is where our silicon is going to go and anything oozes over the front, you won't see it because this tape will Keep it nice and clean. All right, so then we go crazy with silicon all around here, glue the stainless on it, and then anything that oozes out over there, we just peel it off later. It's all nice and clean. Awesome. All right, we've got our clamps ready to go. And what we'll do now is I've just got some um, roof and gutter uh, Sika Flex. Well, it's actually roof and gutter silicon actually, Sika brand. And we'll whack this all around here and then we'll put the stainless on top. You can go pretty crazy with this stuff and as in have a pretty thick bead. Definitely around this edge. I want it on a continuous band so I don't get water up underneath it. I pretty much designed this so the sink pretty much holds the stainless on. So if I ever want to pull this apart, unscrew the sink and I can lift the stainless off of this all in one go. So you can use Marine Sikaflex, that's probably what would be better for this. But I'll run out and because um, Sikaflex haven't sponsored me yet because I use tons of it. Mainly because only five people watch this channel, but thanks for those five too by the way. Um, 
I was just using roof and gutter. That's all I've got at the moment. This will ooze out everywhere. Whoa, what a mess. I had this all over me already and I hadn't even started. This is never going to come out because that's going to ooze into that um, groove and this sink's going to be in there pretty permanent, but I'm not too worried about it. Righto, so there's a bead all the way around. Probably put a bit here for luck. Right, eh? now we can chuck the sink on. Right, let's we'll ease that down. So you can see this oozing out everywhere, that's okay. Just we'll peel that tape off later. Get a few clamps. We'll lock this down. Make sure it's hard up against where we want it. Crank it down too crazy. Cross beam going across there. Let's get another one in this corner, one over there. So anyway, get a general idea, we'll clamp that down. Probably put a couple of rivets in the shed here, just to hold that. And that should be nice. All right, what we'll do is we'll get some pot rivets into this, pin it to the shed. And you're probably asking yourself, why pot rivet? Why wouldn't you just um, screw it into the shed? And the reason for that is quite simple. I've run out of screws and I don't want to drive all the way into town to get some more, so pot rivets it is. So these are actually aluminium pot rivets. Uh, into stainless, it's not going to worry it too much. Get this around the right way. Plus they're nice and flush, they won't go anywhere. Right, I'll take this tape off while it's still a little bit wet. So what that's done under here, there's this real nice little bead of silicon all the way around that edge. And it's hidden away. Just gives it a nice clean finish and nothing much should get stuck behind there. All right, time to take these clamps off. Right, so next job is to take all this plastic off. All right, well that's the stainless sink part finished. Didn't come up too bad. So we've got a little um, bit of stainless runs over the sink everywhere there, so I can basically fill it here and skid all the fish waste off that. Won't get hooked there, straight into the sink. Can hose it all back and it'll run off through the back there and most of it'll end up in the sink anyway. So yeah, so that's the little cutout we did. So that's tidied that up fairly well. So what I'll do now is um, I'll just quickly tap off this um, water pipe down here, 
put a T-piece in, run a little garden tap up to here with a little short um, feed up to a nozzle there. So then I can just blast it out and I can hose the boat off and um, run the motor on the other hose at the same time because we used to share the hose all the time, it was a bit of a pain, but first world problems. But anyway, we'll get that plumbed in. I'll just turn the water off and we'll get into it. Right, this is a tap we're going to put on the side of this sink to run the second hose. Um, brass, stainless, generally corrode. It's not a boat, so it really doesn't matter. But what I thought I'd do is just quickly cut out a little bit of rubber. Um, just got the scissors to cut that out. That'll go on there, and that'll be a bit of a um, insulation barrier between the brass and stainless when I screw it on the side. So I'll just cut out, marked it, and just get the hole punch. Just quickly cut out the holes like that. So that'll go on there as a bit of a gasket and then we can screw that up and it shouldn't shouldn't react as much. I'll just whack a bit of thread tape on this tap. They're a nylon fitting anyway, um, tapered which probably don't really need this but I'll just do it anyway. Generally makes a better connection. And these are tapered as well, so they don't actually need thread tape, but we'll do it anyway. Just do a little thin bit with this stuff. Right, we'll tighten that up. I'll get the pipe mounted onto there. They didn't have a female fitting straight from here to there, so I had to buy an adapter, which is not the prettiest, but it's all they had at the time, so I had to go with it. Right, she's all finished, so yeah, I went fishing the other night and got onto a few whiting. So the idea of this is that bag just can chip in there like that, and all our fillets can go straight into there.
All right, so that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Again, hit the like if you enjoyed the video and hit subscribe if you haven't already. That'll help us out. So thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.